Aloha. This is Johnny Jet, and welcome to my podcast, my YouTube channel. And as you can tell, today we're going to be talking all things Hawaii. We're lucky to have Nathan Cam, who is the president of the public relations department at Anthology oh. Group, which is a hospitality, PR, marketing, I assume. And he's been doing it for over 20 years. And I've known him probably close Good to see that. you, bud. <laughs> How long we've known each other? For? I think we have. I think we've, we've known each other for a better part of those two decades. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. This guy is the man. He knows everything about Hawaii. Um, he lives in Hawaii. And whenever I go, we always, almost always, you know, share a meal. I even played on the softball team. That's right. Which we kicked butt that year. That was good, man. <laughs> did, did, you, did we win, by the way? I can't remember. I think I actually hurt my knee after that, that uh, afternoon. But we, uh, we certainly had fun. I can't remember if we won or not, but we certainly had a heck of a time. So. For sure. Yeah. Um, so anyway, if you haven't been to Hawaii, you need to go, but not right now, obviously. Right. Actually, um, we'll talk about it. So what's it like in Hawaii during COVID? <laughs> yeah, man, it's, it's, it's been kind of surreal, right? Um, a lot of different orders since the beginning of March and a lot of changing things. But right now, uh, where we currently are in September, we're in, a, uh, for the island of Oahu, we're basically in a stay-at-home order um, as ordered by the city. And uh, so most people have relegated to working from home uh, or remotely. Um, only essential offices and businesses uh, remain open. So um, yeah, it's been, it's been, it's just been absolutely surreal. Uh, we work in a brick and mortar shop, obviously in downtown Honolulu. And uh, in a matter of a few weeks, we had to move all of our staff, about a hundred of them out of downtown Honolulu and into their homes um, for the remainder of the year. So we've made that decision to go virtual the rest of the year. Um, and when we, and when we can't open the office, uh, we do. And so some people still go in, but most people are hunkering down at home and, and working remote. So, how, so you, how often do you go to the office? So I, I go in maybe a couple times a month. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm, we're fortunate. The, the ability to work remotely and um, uh, continue to do our, our, our good work uh, for, the, for, for a lot of tourism clients and, and corporate and, and public affairs clients um, can still be done in this manner. Um, so we're very grateful for that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, a couple of us are still going in. We have a research group. So a lot of the research folks are still going into the office on a regular basis to conduct the field work and, and do their part. But uh, yeah, I would say 90, 95% of the, the company is actually remote right now. And the internet's been doing, been doing well there the whole time for everybody? We're holding up. We're holding up. Uh, yes. <laughs> I, I would think that would be a challenge. Um, and by the way, have you had COVID or know anyone that has? I have not, thankfully. Um, do I know people who have? Yes, I have. Um, not anyone in Hawaii, in, strangely enough. I mean, um, you know, we've been, we've been fortunate. I mean, our government took a stance of really sort of shutting everything down at the beginning. Um, and so our spread has been relatively low um, until recently. You know, I think um, they, they relaxed some of the restrictions and we started to see a spike again uh, in cases. Um, and so we're starting to see that escalate. And if anyone's been watching the news, they saw that we had the uh, Surgeon General here uh, here last week to help with our surge testing. And so, you know, we're expecting to see more cases show up, but overall we've been, we've been fortunate. I don't, I, I know more people who live outside of Hawaii who have contracted COVID um, and have recovered from it, thankfully, um, than um, anyone personally here. So. Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, Hawaii was, was the gold standard <laughs> until just maybe a couple of weeks ago where they said they've had, uh, um, you know, an outbreak and, and an outbreak for you guys, I think, is like, a, what, 160 cases? I don't even know what it is right now, but it's not yeah. like Florida. <clears throat> yeah, we're surging. We, we, we've, we've gotten up to about 300 cases, uh, three-something a day um, at our peak. Okay. But before that, I mean, we were almost down to zero, and then we were in the, you know, the mid-20s, and then it kind of started to creep up. Then, you know, the hundreds were kind of common, and now we're kind of into the 300s. But, and, um, <clears throat> and do they do a lot of testing? They do. I mean, they do a, they do a fair amount of testing. Um, and a lot of it they're saying is attributed to just the kind of local lifestyle that we have here. There's a lot of families who share dwellings. And so, you know, the ideas of physical distancing and the requirements of doing that uh, are sometimes more challenging. Um, and in this particular case, I mean, it, they've noticed it, uh, particularly amongst maybe the Pacific Islander uh, population. Uh, mm -hmm. But Hawaii is just, you know, anyone that comes here knows, knows the, the islands and, and lifestyle here. Um, Hawaii is a pretty expensive place to live. So you have a lot of families uh, who will live in a single home together uh, to, to avoid that cost. 
uh, or to share that cost. And as a result, you know, unfortunately, people are still going to work or fortunately, people should, are still going to work, I should say. But, you know, the, the thing that we're all trying to figure out is, you know, this whole incubation period of time and you can be asymptomatic, a carrier, and you just really don't know you're passing it around until it's too right. late. And so that's a problem. Yeah. I think I read that the islands make up a 44 percent of of Polynesians, but they count for 30 percent of COVID. Yeah, yeah, and that, and that's why there's there's um, big strides being made by the state of Hawaii, Department of Health, and the city, uh, especially here on on the island of Oahu, uh, city and county of Honolulu, to really try to make sure that there's outreach to those communities, um, because a lot of times it's a language barrier thing, it's a cultural barrier. Um, they don't understand. Um, there's there's just a, a lack of understanding in terms of what they need to do to help flatten the curve, and so you're seeing a lot of that communication roll out now, which will hopefully address some of those situations that we're seeing uh, that are that are the cluster cases and such. Gotcha. And yeah. so if I wanted to go to Hawaii right now, which by the way, I was just on the beach here near LAX <laughs> and I saw two Hawaiian airlines, white bodies take off and I pointed to my wife and my kids and it just, you know, we dream about that. I mean, we had, we had reservations to go in April, obviously we had to cancel them, but so they're really strict right now. You, I could go, but I would have to quarantine for two That's weeks. Correct. That's correct. And fill out all these forms. And, you know, it's not like other states where it's like self quarantine where, you know, yeah. it's on honor. I mean, if you, if you go to a, check into a hotel, they'll give you a, a room key for like only one time use and correct. everyone's watching you yes. and they're following up on you. That's correct. Including yeah. the locals. Including the locals. And you break up a good point. You can still, you can still come if you want, um, but you're supposed to technically lock down in quarantine wherever you decide that is going to be your place of, of lodging um, for, for 14 days. And so, you know, you, you, you make that commitment um, and you're right. Uh, they have a strong follow-up process. I mean, we have a lot of people who will call you daily uh, to make sure that you're in your room. Um, and like you said, the hotels are offering single use keys. So once you're in, you're in, if you exit, you can't get back in. Um, and that means you violated quarantine. And usually that's when they call the local authorities and they follow through. And, you know, we've had several people, as you've probably seen in the news, get arrested for that. Um, you know, it's, it's a hard task, obviously. Um, you know, you hate to put so much of your uh, local law enforcement resources against, against that. So, you know, what we've seen um, is you see community groups popping up. You know, we have these uh, quarantine kapu breakers group that's kind of emerged on Facebook. That's be kind of that's become kind of a citizen patrol, if you will. Um, and they basically uh, field tips and follow through. And if people are violating their quarantine, um, they help to see that they either get back in order or they, they return home. And so, um, you know, we're taking this very seriously. It's overall, I mean, if I was to advise anybody who was thinking of coming here, it's really not a good time to come to Hawaii. Um, you know, people come to enjoy the food, the place, the people, the beaches, obviously the activities and the culture, all of that is just, it's on pause right now. And, um, you know, so are you, the hotels open up? So there's several hotels that are open. I mean, they're, they're not a lot. A lot of them are still kind of in very minimal operation. Um, and a lot of them are not accepting reservations. Um, most we've heard, um, many we heard are, are not going to until this 14 day quarantine is dropped. Otherwise, you know, there's a lot of, um, why, why would people want to come here right. during a time like this? So, um, it just makes it hard idea when they'll drop that quarantine. Well, right now, um, October one has been set as the next date. It's been pushed back a couple in right. one, you know, but it, it all is dependent on how we're doing in terms of our local cases here, how the, how the virus is spreading. And, um, I don't think October 1st, I, I think they're going to extend it. Yeah, I, especially what's you know they've had a spike increase. I, I just don't see it happening this year. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and I'm hope I'm wrong. I really hope I'm wrong. But and the and the reality is right. I think most of us who work in this industry realize that even when they do reopen, there's challenges around it because even while we might have our quarantine drop, there's other locations, other states, other other countries that have quarantine orders in place. So you might be able to come here, but when you go home you'll have to quarantine there for 14 days. So right. it, it becomes a really difficult proposition, I think, for many people who are considering travel right now. Unless you're an essential traveler, then maybe it makes it a little bit more feasible. But, you know, it, it's just overall not a super good time to even be thinking about coming here right now, unfortunately. And so is everyone wearing a mask? I'm proud to say most of, mostly everybody is wearing a mask here. You know, and the, I, I go out to the grocery store to do my shopping and, you know, um, 
So when, when we could go out to eat um, at the restaurants and dine in, which they're all now not allowed to, to dine in anymore, we're all, all, all back to take out on Oahu. Um, yeah, I think for the most part, everyone is trying to do their part to wear the masks, wear their masks and do the distancing and, and follow those orders. So, you know, I feel pretty safe when I'm around uh, Oahu. Yeah, that's good. So is there a problem getting food like at the grocery stores? Are there long lines or are the shelves empty? No, I tell you, you know, in, in the earlier part of this whole pandemic, there's, there's always sort of this, this panic mode, right? It's, it's like when you have the hurricanes coming and sort of that kind of thing. People, people just uh, freak out a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. they, they, they go to the store, they, they empty out the shelves of all the, uh, what was it? What was it? Uh, flour, all the canned goods are gone. Toilet paper just disappears, mm -hmm. you know, magically disappears out of there. Um, but I, I'll, I will say, you know, that was, we're an island community, obviously. So we rely on a lot of the, um, shipping containers to bring us our goods and uh, our shipping suppliers here have always maintained that they're never, we're not going to see um, the kinds of, uh, there's nothing to worry about. You know, what we're seeing now is overbuying and a panic. And so, you know, the, the shipments are still coming in. They just can't keep this, this, the, the shelf stock. This was, this was months ago. Right. You go to the grocery store now. I mean, there's, everything's in there. Uh, can, you buy, can you buy wipes like Clorox wipes? Cause you cannot get them here. Yeah. Yeah. Sanitizer wipes. I mean, you can see, they're, they're pretty abundant these wow. days. Yeah. I, got, yeah. I got to go to Hawaii, just get some wipes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think we've had some pretty innovative companies that have kind of stepped up to the plate to figure out how to get some of this stuff in. And, and, and we're hearing more and more about some grant money that is being thrown around by the state or, or offered by the state to get some of these local companies to, 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 um, to develop or, or, or create PPP, you know, on some of those things. So we can be a little bit more self-reliant and uh, not, not That's worry, good. So much, worry about how so much about how about traffic? You know, especially Oahu. I mean, a lot of the islands is, have traffic, traffic but Oahu is especially. Great. <laughs> traffic has been great. I will tell you. I mean, it's um, <clears throat> during the, the initial closures. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I live in the I live in a place called Pearl City on in Honolulu, which is about fifteen miles, uh, fifteen minutes east. Uh, I'm sorry, fifteen minutes west of the airport. Right. Uh, so for me to commute into town every day on a normal business day where there's traffic, it usually is about uh, I can be about a 45 minute drive in 40 to 45 minutes, depending on the traffic. Now I can go into town and back in about 40 minutes. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's, um, you know, roads are generally clear when they did reopen the economy for a period of time, you could see some of that traffic creeping back in, you know? Um, but now again, now that things are mostly shut down here in Oahu. Yeah. You can, you can be traveling at all times of the day and pretty much get there in a fair amount of time. I mean, that's gotta be, it almost has to be like the locals must be loving this and hating it because first of all, they love tourists and tourism dollars, but the ones who are not dependent on tourism must be like, man, this is like old Hawaii. I, I assume I, I watch a surf cam, a webcam um, every, almost every night to see the sunset in Hawaii. And it doesn't look like yeah. there's a lot of people out surfing either. Um, you know, there's, I think, I think there's a fair amount and, but you know, those people that are out surfing are all locals now. Right. And so I think there has been this, this part of, um, you know, there's been some building tension in the community about the impacts of tourism. I think like any destinations that's seen success out there, you know, Hawaii is not unique to this. We've heard plenty of times about other destinations, this idea of over tourism and all that. And I think what we're seeing now is, you know, we've had a chance to pause here in the islands and see what it feels like uh, for a period of time without visitors and what right. that can be like. And I think what the industry, what the tourism industry is committed to, and I know this because we work with many of those uh, there, is working with community to try to figure out how to, how to return to tourism, but in a more managed way, right? So it's fair and it, you know, that the locals can still continue to reap the benefits of having a tourism industry, but it needs to meet the needs of the locals. Um, and so that's, that's a big shift in, in, in change. I mean, I assume just in December, you got, or even January, you guys were probably having a conversation like, you know what? What are we going to do about this over tourism? I, I know exactly. a lot of hot spots, and Hawaii has to be one of them. Yeah, because there were so many people coming, and I mean, there's almost like a, a silver silver lining to this. Um, there, there is. I mean, if you there know, is. We, yeah, I mean, you know, the silver lining, I guess, is that it gives us, you know, to your point. I mean, how would we ever completely stop an industry? Um, you know, why would we ever do that to try to reset it? <clears throat> And, you know, I guess if there's one bright spot in this pandemic for that reason, it's allowed the islands to heal a little bit. Um, we've seen some of our natural resources come back, you know, places like Hanama Bay. And, uh, you know, you see reports from time to time that you're seeing more life in the coral, different type, you know, fish coming back. And, 
And so we see what we can do when we tread more lightly on our environment, right? And I think that's really inspired a lot of people to think hard about how do we do this right going forward. Um, and I think a lot of companies who are involved in the industry, they've, they've always wanted, you know, we have a lot of companies who are very responsible in the ecotourism space here. Um, but how do you continue to build on that? You know, and how does the state support an effort like that? You know, the reality is we're not going to be getting back to 10 million visitors anytime soon. You know, not, not nearly in, in the next few years is what the, what, the, what the experts and forecasters are saying of our economy. So what, you were getting 10 million visitors a year? 10 million. We reached 10 million visitors to actually 10, 10 point something last year. That was the most ever. And that was, we've, we've, we were on record years uh, for the last seven or eight years. Uh, every year reporting just new, more and more and more arrivals coming in. And so, um, you know, we knew, it, conversations were starting to turn a couple of years ago about how do we put our hands around this? How do we put our arms around this and really uh, get a hold of it? And it's a hard one, right? I mean, we're, as everyone knows, Hawaii is a very tourism dependent economy here. Yep. <clears throat> Been talk about diversification of our economy for many years. Um, it's easier said than done. I mean, you know, some of it is due to our location. Some of it is due to just our physical infrastructure here and uh, maybe the willingness to maybe move an idea like that forward. But you've seen some amazing groups of people rise up during this time who are thinking deeply about the future of our state. And you're hearing law, you're seeing lawmakers and policymakers and government officials listening um, even more now. Uh, to those conversations and including themselves in there. So I think for many of us, it gives us hope that there can be a, a dialogue on this uh, to move Hawaii forward um, in a way where we still have to depend on some form of tourism here, uh, because that is something that we just don't, everyone agrees, I think, that we just don't see a way forward without it. Uh, we need well, to help. I hope you have it because as in yeah. my own selfish ways, I mean, that's, <laughs> Hawaii is our go-to place. I mean, we Absolutely. love it. It is, I've been fortunate that I've gone at least two dozen times at least. I know. Um, I've seen you many of those times and we, and we love having you folks here. You know, so and, it's, a, it's an amazing place. And, you know, you live in Pearl City. So, I mean, that's, that's part of the flight path, correct? Coming in? Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually a little bit, it's a little bit north of the flight. The, 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 but you the see the planes path, coming I, I can, in. I can see some planes coming through. So through have you noticed, a, 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 you know, a dip in planes, a lot less than yeah. normal? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you got you know, for if you can imagine, for a period of uh, when was it until I think July or August, we hadn't had any international flights hardly, right? So all the flights from Japan and stuff, uh, they weren't flying in. Um, our our arrivals, Johnny, and you probably know this. I mean, we're down year over year. I mean, like nine percent, right? So I mean, we basically have uh, what we normally would have on a regular day, somewhere between twenty eight and maybe thirty five thousand visitors coming into the islands during those days. I can tell you. 2000 daily, the daily visitor numbers yeah i mean early on it was like 800 600 you know we're up to now maybe 2000 wow. uh, 18 to you know 200 2000 and on a monthly average now it's maybe like 20,000 people coming in right so it's 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 uh it's really cut back um, so are the international flights coming in from japan and korea and they're starting to but it's it's mostly from japan um, they've started, you know, Japan Airlines and some of those folks have restarted some of their flights, but is that cargo it, mostly or is it, or people coming? Of, just... There's some people on those flights. Um, a lot of it, I think initially was maybe students when they restarted it, you know, I students see. coming back to study in the islands and essential workers, um, you know, business people who have to come here and conduct business for essential needs. Right. I mean, there, uh, probably a lot of cargo coming in on those flights too. For yeah. sure. I would love to get on one of those flights. I, I, I would think for, you know, not only is it not going to be full, but, you know, Hawaii right now, I just can't imagine how, I mean, it's, it's got to be a special time. It's also a scary time. It really is. And a weird time. I mean, so you say you get takeout. Do you, do you go out often and are, and are your favorite restaurants open or did they close? Yeah. No, I mean, we, we do takeout. We try to do takeout a couple times a week to just support the local businesses. I mean, small businesses in the, in the islands right now, they're really struggling. Um, you know, we have the highest unemployment rate we've ever seen in the state. And, and I think one of the highest across the country because we're so, you know, a lot of our, our workforce is dependent on a, on a vibrant tourism industry. Right. Um, but yeah, you know, we try to get out and do our part to, to do what we can. And yes, uh, to your question, a lot of our favorite spots, they're still open. They've modified their operations and, you know, there's nothing like sitting in and having a drink at the bar with your favorite bartender. But, you know, the next best thing, I guess, is just knowing that you know, by doing the takeout, you're, you're trying to help them keep their business afloat during these very uncertain times. So it's, it's kind of crazy. How about, how about the uh, tourist hotspots like Duke's Waikiki or Leonard's mm. where you get the mal malasadas? Um, you know, 
my favorite shave ice place. Uh, I'm spacing on his name. You, you yeah. took me to it. Um, uh, uh, Wyola. I think we went to Wyola the last time you came through. Um, Are they so open? Th those places, uh, for the most part, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. I mean, everyone's trying to be as open as they okay. can. Uh, maybe modified hours, maybe sm shorter days. Um, okay. And, you know, unfortunately, probably not nearly the lines that you would have to fight through or wait in to get your hot malasadas at Leonard's, you know. It, but, um, right. yeah, every, everyone who's, who's you've seen a lot of folks adapting to this abnormal. And um, How about Ala Moana Mall? Is that shut down or? Yeah, the, I think the uh, malls and things have been shut down again. So, wow. you know, you're just, and, you know, even when they do reopen the malls, um, not all the stores are open, right? So, you know, a lot of people are playing the balancing game between, you know, putting uh, resources back into having people employed and having the shop open and all those uh, things that have come with running a business. And mm -hmm. what is the true revenue that's going to be coming in um, to those shops? Can you go to Target at the Alamoana Center? Yes. Yeah, open? yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can go to Target. Okay. Um, but the main mall, it's... Of course, you froze right when I said Target. Um, I don't know if it's my internet or your <laughs> yeah, internet. Target. What's that? You froze a little bit. I think you're still frozen. Hello, is it me? It's, it could be my internet, although it says it's strong. Let me just check. Nope, I think it's, I think it's mine, buddy. Am okay. I any better now or worse? Yeah, you're, you're, you're better. Good. Okay. Hey, I'm this not. is quarantine times. Everyone's, uh, and I, I would think in Hawaii again, that the internet's got to be getting stretched, especially during business hours. I'm actually at home right now sharing this internet with two of my children who are, two of my kids who are distance learning right now. Are um, they? As I, as I on work Xbox the or? They're all on Zoom, Zoom <laughs> classroom, Google classroom. Um, it's, it's, it's really tremendous what, I can't even imagine what it's like to be a teacher these days. Um, it's tough sure. enough in the classroom. And then it's even harder now to try to figure out how to produce a, a game plan for kids doing it this way, you know? Right. Um, so no, in, they're, not, they're not going into the school right now. Not going into the school right now. Gotcha. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, yeah. Before I let you go, since you're such a foodie, when <laughs> Hawaii does open up, tell us the best place <laughs> to get Hawaiian food. On Oahu. Oh, best place for Hawaiian food on Oahu. I mean, so many different spots. I mean, you got Highway Inn, you got Helena's. Um, yeah, you got you got a ton of different spots, and and I hate to favor any one over the other. It's always the hardest question because they all have their specialties, and right. it always it always almost depends on what you want to eat. You know, and what's 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 your mojo for that day? Right. Um, so many great little places. And what do you consider if someone says what's a Hawaiian dish? What would you say? Is it is it is it pig or is it teriyaki yeah. chicken? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, there's a distinction between Hawaiian food and what might be local plate lunch kind of food, right? Okay. So when people say Hawaiian food, I think of, um, I think of lao lao, poi, you know, a little lomi salmon on the What's plate. What's lao lao? Have, pork? Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, lao lao is um, the, the taro leaves, okay. uh, who are, which kind of you put uh, pork and butterfish and other kinds of things in there that you like. People put kalo, which is a taro and breadfruit in there, and then you wrap it up into a nice little bundle, you tie it up, and then you steam it. And so when it comes out, uh, you, wrap, you wrap it up in the, in the tea leaf. And then uh, when it comes out, the luau leaves almost look like spinach, if you will. I mean, it has that kind of cooked spinach consistency to yep. it. And then it just opens up and you have this beautiful, savory uh, pork and butterfish with, you know, usually some, some pork fat in there. That's kind of just gives it a little bit more juice in there. Um, you know, you sprinkle, you pour some of your favorite um, chili pepper water on top of it. And, you know, some people like it with white rice on the side. Some people, if it's a true Hawaiian plate, you might have it with some poi, right? Which is the pounded up taro into the, the more yeah, liquid I'm not form. A poi, I'm not a poi guy. Understood. Understood. Um, and then you normally have it with things like lomi salmon. And maybe there's some, some additional kalua pork on the side. Um, you know, that, that to me is kind of a more traditional Hawaiian plate. Uh, when you talk about teriyaki chicken and maybe um, that kind of stuff, we're talking more plate lunch. So that's a local... With representation Mac. of a lot of different a lot of different cultures coming together um, basically from the plantation days right it's an adaptation of that so right. you know stories go back to the plantation days where people would come with their lunches and you'd have filipino chinese japanese you know and caucasian all, all kind of there working together and everyone would share a little bit of their lunch with each other so that's where you'd have um you know the different ethnic groups represented on a plate and uh that's that's why plate lunch is so popular too you know you can get 
you know, your American classics like the fried chicken and stuff alongside, um, you know, uh, luau stew, right? Which is something that's very, <laughs> you know, local in tradition, you know, kind of a thing. Local moco? Local moco is a favorite, right? I mean, nice hamburger. fat hamburger patty on a gravy. bed of white rice, gravy, and a sunny side egg right on top of that. I thing. love that. I get, I, I get I a local moco at least almost every time I'm there. Um, so is it, so even though you're in Hawaii, but you're on the island of Oahu, you can't yeah. go to the other main islands like Maui or the big island, Hawaii, Kauai, um, can you? Or Lanai? Yeah. yeah, they've 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 put back that they've put back the oh I'm sorry, I think I might be am I breaking right. again, Johnny? I I think um they, they reinstated the 14 day inner island quarantine as well. And so here's where things get complicated. If Oahu people travel to any of the other neighbor islands, we have to quarantine on the other neighbor islands. If anyone from the neighbor islands come and visits us now through the end of this month, they can roam freely. They don't have to quarantine here. Until they get back. But if, until they get back. Correct. Yeah. So there's, there's this trade-off to the whole thing, right? Gotcha. So, yeah, we relaxed that a little bit. And once the surges, the cases started to surge again on the island of Oahu, they put it back into place. Um, so, so, I mean, so the place to be like Maui or, you know, an, another island where, you know, they don't have these restrictions and there's a, obviously a lot less cases. Yeah. Well, every island has the 14 day quarantine, right? So if you're coming in from out of state right. on every island, you're going to quarantine. Right. Uh, if you're a local person now going to any island, aside from coming to Oahu, you're going to quarantine. So overall, it's just not a real conducive time to be traveling much anywhere right now. Uh, gotcha. Two of the islands are within it. So I mean, I even heard that some hotels, they, they don't even want to open up right now under these restrictions because they're going to lose money if they have to open up at 25% and things like that. I'm not sure if that's true, but is, I mean, do you, do you, have you heard of that? I've seen similar things reported, and I think that there is truth to that. You know, there is, there is a minimum threshold of, of business that needs to be coming through a property, right? I mean, to be able to justify you know, bringing, uh, bringing staff back in, opening up your operations, incurring the cost to do all those sorts of things to run your F and B, you know, to keep the housekeeping going again, all your securities and all that sort of thing. So, you know, every hotel is probably different based on their business structure and, and right. what they, what their targets are. I think there's pretty much consensus that, you know, we need to start seeing a minimum trickle of tourism coming back into the state uh, before people can seriously be thinking about reopening, you know, their, their operations completely. Um, you know, we'd like right. to think that uh, maybe there's a Kama'aina market or a local market for travel during this time. And, and maybe there was one for a, a month or two, but, you know, let's be honest. I mean, the local market can't sustain the industry here and, and what it was producing prior to this. So, right. um, you know, we try to help and we try to do our part, but it's, it, it's, it's just, everything is just really impacted right now in, in the visitor gotcha. industry. Yeah. Um, my last question, I believe. Sure. Um, <laughs> What do you, how do you think Hawaii, how do you think travel to Hawaii will be different in a post COVID world? Will it just bounce right back or do you think it will be different? Yeah. From, from everything that I've been hearing and, and what, um, you know, the economists are saying um, both nationally and, and within the state is it's, it's we're going to see a real slow recovery here. Um, you know, so much of, of our, of our success is going to depend on how the rest of the country is doing. Um, and a lot of our, our closures and shutdown is, um, you know, based upon the fact that there has just been just such a widespread of the of COVID across the country. And so, right. you know, one thing that we want to make sure that people are clear about is not that we're against visitors coming into the islands, you know, it's anyone traveling. And, and you know, most of the cases initially when Hawaii was experiencing uh, an uptick in cases were situations where locals were traveling to the mainland and then returning home with the virus, you know, right. and so, um, you know, I, there, there's always been an affinity for having travelers come here and there will always be an affinity for that, I believe. Um, how does it look different? I think the, the engagement that people have with the destination is going to look different. Um, it's going to be, you know, we talked earlier about this sort of managed tourism model going forward. And I think this pause is going to give us time to think about um, other situations that have happened in the islands over the last couple of years. If you look to an island like Kauai and what they did on the North Shore in Hanalei and out towards Hyena, um, after they had the big flood there, the community had an opportunity to kind of reset what was going on out in Hyena. 
So, you know, you impose um, a little bit more restrictions there to decrease access, decrease um, people parking illegally on the side of the roads, in people's driveways, you know, and, and you kind of manage the resource better, right? And I think that's something that is going to be happening uh, more going forward. We already see things like that with Hanama Bay and Haleakala. Um, and it's not to keep people out. And I think it's more to the make sure that we can have these resources here for, for generations to come. You know, we can continue to overrun these things and not have the resources to maintain them. But we have a, we have a huge opportunity now to think differently about how we, how we manage these resources that are very precious to not only visit, to, to, to visitors, um, to residents first and foremost. These are, we, we hike the same trails, we go to the same places, and we right. want to see the same beauty. Um, well, let's just manage it smarter. You know? So maybe people, maybe people coming here in the future, and I don't know, but maybe there's a little bit more um, you know, visitor impact fees being uh, assessed you know, to, to hike a trail. But we believe that the people that come to Hawaii truly clearly, you know, care deeply about this destination. They want to see it survive as much as locals want to see it survive for the most part. So Agreed. What's, what's $5 to hike you know, up Diamond Head or maybe a trail like that um, if they know that their money is going to be going to the, the, the sustainability of it and the maintenance of it so that we can all continue to enjoy it? Uh, in yeah. years to come. So. They should. Uh, 100% they should. I mean, I know like Diamond Head, they do charge, you know, parking. They, they, yeah, they yeah. Re, you know, last few years or five years ago, whenever they re, they st stated that and stated that. But yeah. anyway. and I think that, I think we're going to see some more experiences being developed that's going to put visitor closer to the community in meaningful ways. And so, you know, volunteerism, we all know, has been a big thing over the years um, and people more and more we're seeing want to want to understand how can I have a more positive impact during my vacation in Hawaii yeah you know sitting by the pool doing the beach I mean all great you know let's go zip lining let's go golf and all that but what can I do to make Hawaii better when I leave than when I came right so what small action can I do and I think we're going to start to see more um, opportunities like that for visitors to continue to get involved and and do that thing so but living on an island, by the way, you must be having island fever. I mean, I, I follow you on Instagram and Twitter. And, you know, before COVID, you were always traveling, especially to the mainland. You, yeah. And a couple of times. Uh, sorry, did you have island fever? You know, I think, um, you know, as much as I travel, I don't travel nearly as much as maybe other people do. Do I have island fever? Honestly, I don't at this point. I think we found plenty of other distractions during this pandemic to kind of, uh, to kind of occupy our attention. We've, my wife and I, we've turned to gardening, you know, and we spent a lot of time now trying to build up our garden outside. And I cool. see a lot of people doing that, um, doing a lot more cooking at home. So, you know, we're finding ways to kind of keep ourselves occupied. Do we wish we could, do I wish I could go see my parents on the big, on uh, Hawaii Island, big island? Yeah, absolutely. I wish I could, you know, and, and they wish they could come and see the grandkids and all that. But I think we believe, I mean, let's just make the tough decisions now to just hunker down, try to beat this thing up a little bit more, you know, get it to a minimum again so that we can start to really enjoy whatever part of normalcy we can, you know, right. in, in the month or two ahead. So, you know, it's a small sacrifice, hopefully for a large payoff in the end where we can kind of get back to normal and I can get my kids back to Six Flags there in California and all that kind of stuff. So, so when was the last time you were on a plane? Was it when you, when you were in Disneyland or and when was the last time you saw your parents? Uh, last time I saw my parents in person was probably in February, right? And so they live, they live on Hawaii Island. Right. Um, our last big trip, and I'm trying to remember because I think our last big trip was to California. Actually, we went to Six Flags um, right before all this stuff happened. And this trip to be able to do that right before all this crazy was going to hit. So, right. My last question for sure. Okay. So what are you growing in your garden? <laughs> so we've got a lot of different things growing, but the kids love green beans. So we got a lot of different varieties of green beans growing. That seems to be doing well. Cucumbers are another favorite of my daughter, eggplants, a lot of different herbs um, to just, um, I've been, I've been also on a focaccia break, uh, focaccia bread baking binge lately. Tomato. So uh, just making all different versions of that kind of stuff. I've got some tomatoes growing outside and uh, I'm trying to get a papaya tree growing. Does um, it grow year round? It grows year round, I assume, right? It does grow pretty much. And, you know, we're, we're learning day by day and month by month what actually can grow in a, our garden here, you know, in the climate and, um, and maybe what can't. But it's, it's been fun experimenting and um, just, you know, cleaning up the house and it's just odds and ends kind of thing around the house too. It's just been really, yep. really fun. I'm yeah. with you. <laughs> well, Nathan... 
mahalo for your time. Oh, and, um, my pleasure, man. Mahalo I, to you as well. I really can't wait to uh, go to Hawaii, give you a hug, and um, and get back and get, and get back to the beauty. I can't wait for that either, man. All right, buddy. Okay. Take care. Thank you. <laughs> you take care as well. Double right. shock is for you, bro. <laughs>